Welcome to Scratch Junior Coding. This is a series of videos to help you learn to code using Scratch Junior. On Scratch Junior, you can create your own stories, riddles, games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything and the programs that you write. Today, we're going to create a jumping game. When I click the green flag, it starts the game and we have to jump over the square block trying to run over our red ball. And every time I jump over without getting killed, it moves the red dot to keep our score. Oh, and I touch the square, so that's the end of the game. If you're new to Scratch Junior, you may want to watch the first 10 videos in this series to learn the basics of how to write programs in Scratch Junior. This is the 15th video and we're creating this game today. In the last lesson, we created a scene where red ball rolls down the hill and then back up. So I copied that into this just because I thought it would be fun today. So let's see what happens in the first scene. So he rolls and then it goes to the next scene. So in this scene, this square ninja is rolling towards red ball. Let's look at his code. He just goes to the left in a loop forever and he also rolls in a loop forever. So when he rolls over here and hits red ball, this is the code where red ball gets hit by another character. This red ball becomes invisible and sends an orange message. This red ball starts off invisible, but when he gets a red message, he becomes invisible and then goes to scene two. We've seen in previous lessons that we can't change the way our character looks. The way we change the way our character looks is we just change from one character to another. So when this red ball gets touched, he goes invisible and this red ball becomes visible. And then it goes to scene three. And in scene three, this red ball floats up and disappears. And it's the end of the game. So I added all these extra scenes just to make it fun. I added scene one with red ball rolling because we did that in our last video. Scene two is where the whole game takes place. I added scene three in scene four, just to show the end of the game. Pretending like Red Ball is now a ghost because he got touched, and then the end of the game. Let's focus on all the action going on in scene two, because that's where all the, the game happens. I'm going to just start a new project. And delete the default character. Pick a background. You could pick any background. This is one that I made. I just added some dirt and some grass. We could pick any character. I drew these fun characters in the editor, but let's pick one that you already have. Since we're going to be jumping, I'm going to pick the frog. Make him a little smaller. And we'll let a ball roll toward the frog. So the action for the ball will be when we click the green flag. It's going to go left forever. But now it looks like it's sliding. Let's also, at the same time that it's going to the left, it's going to roll to the left forever. Let's see if that looks like a ball rolling. That's much better. For the frog, we'll tell him 
when you get touched. We want to go to scene two. We don't have a scene two or a page two. Let's make a page two. That says the end. Our background could be something as simple. It's just an orange background. So now when we go to scene one and we say, okay, frog, when you get touched, we have the option of going to scene two. So let's start over our code and push the green flag. So the ball rolls and when it touches the frog, that's the end of the game. So now we need a way to not lose so fast. I like to click on the frog to make him jump or click on my red ball to make him jump. You could have an arrow to make him jump or just a spot to click in or touch to make him jump. But I'm gonna make it so when I click on the frog, he'll jump over the ball. The trigger blocks are the yellow blocks. And what we want to trigger this code is whenever we click on the frog. So that's this one. Whenever we touch him or click on him. He's going to jump over the ball. Let's play that game. Did you see what happened? He did not jump up enough. He still touched the ball. So that was the end of our game. When I was playing with the red ball game and figuring this out, a good number for the red ball to jump up was six. And then I also made red ball move over to the right. So at the same time that he's jumping up, He's going to move over about three. Let's see if that will get him over the ball. That's some pretty good numbers. But eventually, he's going to be off the screen. So after he moves over three, we're going to wait just a little while to let the ball go by. And then we're going to move back to where we started. Let's see what that looks like. He can jump over the ball now. Oh. I clicked too early. What you need to do for this lesson is make your character jump over an obstacle. That obstacle needs to be coming at your character and make your character jump over it so that you can play the game of jumping over some obstacle. But I'm going to go back to my other code to show you one more thing about scene two in this, in this project. Whenever I was playing this game, I wanted to have some kind of way to keep score. Do you see up at the top? Every time I jump over it, it moves my little red dot over to the right. And Scratch Jr., I couldn't figure out a way to really count and keep score. But I want to be able to win. If I could get that red dot to get all the way over to the right, Ah, oh, I didn't make it. But I do have a way to count. So I got it over between the three and the four. So that's a way to keep score. The bar, the gray bar, doesn't really do anything. What's keeping score is this character. Every time it sees a red letter, it moves to the right one. And the red letter comes from every time 
after red ball jumps, this red ball. After this red ball jumps, it sends a red letter, and that makes the red dot move over to keep score for us. And if you want to add scoring to your game, then that would be great. But for today's lesson, the most important thing is just that you can get your character to jump over an obstacle. And if you can get your character to jump over an obstacle to play the game, then congratulations, you've mastered this lesson. This free coding lesson was provided by STEM in Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.